السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله, واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كلام الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار وإنما توعدون لآت وما أنتم بمعجزين Allah is whom we praise we praise him and we thank him and we seek refuge in him from the evil of our own souls and the evil of our actions whomsoever he guides none can misguide him and whomsoever he leaves astray none can guide to the truth and I bear witness that there is no one worthy of worship but Allah alone and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam peace and blessings be upon him is his slave and messenger O you who believe, be mindful of Allah as he should be minded, and do not die except as Muslims. O mankind, be mindful of your Lord who created you from one soul, and from that soul its mate, and from those two spread many men and many women. And be mindful of those who you ask your rights from, and be mindful of the wombs that bore you, for indeed Allah is ever watchful over you. O you who believe, be mindful of Allah and speak the truth. He will guide you to righteous deeds and forgive you of your sins, and whomsoever obeys Allah and his messenger has achieved the greatest achievement. The best of speech is Allah's speech. And the best of guidance is Muhammad's guidance, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
And the worst of affairs are those newly introduced into faith. And everything newly introduced into faith is an innovation. And every innovation goes astray. And everything which goes astray leads to the hellfire. And that which was promised will come to pass. And there is nothing that can be done to prevent it. In perhaps one of the most comprehensive rhetorical questions that is asked in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses all of mankind when He says, Ya ayyuhan nasu ma gharraka bi rabbika al kareem. O mankind, what has deceived you regarding your generous Lord? What is it that prevents you from going and turning to the one? who in his hands is all means of harm and all means of benefit, who in his hands is all good, who has destined your creation, your, your, your sustenance, and your eventual, eventual return to him. What is it that has prevented you from turning towards the one that is generous to you in all ways and shapes and forms? that has provided for you since your childhood until your old age, that has given you life and can take that life from you, that has given you wealth and can take that wealth from you, that has given you happiness and can take that from you, that has given you sadness and can remove that from you. What is it that prevents us from turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It's narrated from Abu Sa'id radiallahu ta'ala anhu in Bukhari and Muslim as well as the Sunan of Ibn Majah that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said كَانَ فِي مَنْ كَانَ قَبْلَكُمْ رَجُلٌ قَتَلَ تِسْعًا وَتِسْعِينَ نَفْسًا There was a man who lived amongst the people before you that had killed 99 men and he after Feeling remorse for doing so, he asked the people to refer him to someone. Fadulla al Rahib. So he was shown the place of a monk, the place of a worshipper. And he said to that worshipful person, Halli min Toba, can I repent? And this worshipful person said to him, La. No, there's no repentance for you. On hearing this, the man said, might as well make it a hundred. And he killed that man as well. After some time passed, he felt remorse once again. And wanting to turn towards Allah, he told the people, refer me to someone, show me someone. So in that instance, he was referred to a scholar, a knowledgeable person. And when he went to him, he said, Can I repent? Is there any repentance for me, for someone like me? I've killed 100 people. This man said, Woman, Who is it that can come between you and between repentance to Allah? No one can come between you and repentance to Allah. However, the place that you live in is an evil place. So remove yourself from that evil environment and go to another land. Go to another town where there are good people. Go there and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and dedicate yourself to Him because there are people there that will worship along with you. And never return to your land because it's a land of wrongdoing. So he set out on the path. He set out on the path to this new land. And as he was in the middle of the path, he passed away. Imagine, traveling to a new land, you die in the middle of the road. The angels of mercy came down and said, he was going towards Allah. We're, we're taking his soul. The angels of punishment came down and they said, no, he had not yet reached that town and he had done great evil. Therefore, we're taking his soul. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent an angel to mediate between them. 
And he said to them, measure the, the distance between the good, the good township that he was going towards and the evil town that he was leaving. And so when they measured, they found that he had just beaten it by an inch by turning his chest towards the good town. And therefore, the angels of mercy took his soul. What is in this story for us? In this story is a lesson that regardless of how large your sins are, how bad you've done, the wrong that you've committed to others, as long as you are turning your heart and turning your chest towards Allah, there is always hope for you. There is always a chance for you. No one can prevent you from tawbah. Let no one deceive you about the generosity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna Allah hayyun kareem. Wa yastahi an yara abdahu rafi'an yadayhi fayarudduhu ma sifra. The hadith of the Prophet alayhi salatu salam in the sunnah of, of Abi Dawood. Your Lord is bashful and generous. And he is shy to see his slave raising his hands in dua and allow him to put them down empty. Turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he will turn towards you. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, tubu ila Allahi tawbatan nasuha. Asa rabbukum an yukaffira ankum sayyiatikum wa yudakhirukum jannatin tajiri tahtaha al-anhar. O you who believe, repent to Allah sincerely. O you who believe, repent to Allah sincerely, for perhaps your Lord will expi expiate, forgive you, write off all of your sins, and enter you into paradise, into paradise under which rivers flow. What does it mean to repent from our sins? Number one, to stop doing that sin. That's the obvious. To stop doing the thing that we're doing. Number two, to feel a deep sense of remorse. Some people say, I sin and I sin and I feel bad for myself. I'm a horrible person. Don't think bad of yourself for feeling bad about your sins. That is actually a very good sign. It's a healthy sign. It means that your heart is alive. It means that you realize the difference between right and wrong. The Prophet ﷺ said, نَدَمُ tawbah." Remorse is tawbah. It is the core of tawbah. It's not the only thing, but it is the core. As the Prophet ﷺ said, الحج عرفة. Hajj is عرفة. Does that mean we show up at عرفة? We, we were at عرفة, and then we leave? No. There are many other things that we do in Hajj. But the core of Hajj is عرفة. And the core of of your pilgrimage to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the remorse that you show. Then you should have resolve about not going back to that sin again. And try your best to not return to it. How can you try your best? By following up bad deeds with good deeds. Replacing the difficulties and the, 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 the sins that you have. Look, look, all of us are going to sin. All of us are going to make mistakes. We have to be realists with ourselves. We are all going to sin. We are all going to make mistakes. It is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written upon us. The question is why? Why did he write it upon us? So that we can lift ourselves to, through his power, through his will, lift ourselves to a higher state of consciousness and gain more blessing. So when you sin, make yourself a promise. Anytime I do something that I find objectionable, sinful, that I find problematic, I'm going to immediately do something afterwards that will wipe that away. I'm going to pray two extra rak'ah. I'm going to smile in someone's face. I'm going to exhibit the best of character. I'm going to give sadaqah. I'm going to do something to wipe out that bad deed with a good one. And then fifthly, if you have wronged someone, then part of your tawbah, part of your repentance is to recompense them, either by seeking their forgiveness, by asking for them to excuse you for what you've done, or if you've wronged them in their wealth or any other thing, to make amends and to pay that back. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّمَا التَّوْبَةُ لِلَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ السُّوءَ بِجَهَالَةٍ ثُمَّ يَتُوبُونَ مِنْ قَرِيبٍ فَأُولَٰئِكَ يَتُوبُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَلِيمًا حَكِيمًا Indeed, repentance is only for those who do some evil out of ignorance and then repent shortly thereafter. It is they that Allah will accept their repentance from them and Allah is most all-knowledgeable, all-wise. The Prophet ﷺ said about how long we have until we can make tawbah. He ﷺ said, Allah will accept the repentance of his slave as long as he does not gurgle at the end of life. And his soul is, is leaving his, his, his collarbone. It's the last moment in your life that you have to be able to repent. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَنْ تَابَ قَبْلَ أَن تَطْلُعُ الشَّمْسِ مِنْ مَغْرِبِهَا تَابَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ Whoever repents before the sun rises from whence it sets, then Allah will accept that repentance from him. What are some of the ways that we can strengthen our resolve for repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and especially now in Ramadan? Remember, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was once standing on his mimbar. And he went down a step and he said, Ameen. And then he went down a step and he said, Ameen. And then he went down a step and he said, Ameen. And the hadith is narrated in the Muslim of Imam Ahmad. The people said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, we saw you walk down the steps and say, Ameen, with every step. So why were you saying that? He said, Atani Jibreel. Faqala, Raghima Amfa. مَنْ أَدْرَكَهُ رَمَضَانٌ فَلَمْ يُغْفَرْ لَهُ وَرَغِمَ أَنْفَ مَنْ وَجَدَ أَبَوَيْهِ أَوْ أَحَدُهُمَا حَيًّا فَلَمْ يُغْفَرْ لَهُ وَرَغِمَ أَنْفَ مَنْ ذُكِرْتَ عِنْدَهُ فَلَمْ يُصَلِّ عَلَيْكَ He said, O oh, oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ruined is the one who reaches the month of Ramadan and his sins aren't forgiven. And then he said, say ameen. So I said, ameen. Ruined is the one who finds both of his parents or one of them alive and they don't enter him into Jannah. Say ameen. So I said, ameen. And ruined is the one who hears you mentioned in front of him and he doesn't send salawat upon you. So say ameen. And I said, ameen. Here in the last, possibly last day of Ramadan, this is our opportunity to not deceive ourselves about our generous Lord. To not lie to ourselves and think that we're bad people. We're not. But we have the propensity, we have the ability to do the best that we can. And sometimes all it takes is one step towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All it takes is for us to take initiative. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, المسلم من سلم المسلمون من لسانه ويده والمهاجر من هجر السوء The Muslim, the one who submits to Allah, is the one whose people, who people's hands and tongues are safe from. And the muhajir, the emigrant, is the one who moves away from evil. He, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, also said, and that hadith was narrated in Muslim, this hadith is narrated in the Muslim of Imam Ahmed, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-Mujahidu man jahada nafsahu fi ta'atillah. The Mujahid is the one who strives against himself in the obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wal-Muhajiru man hajara al-dhunuba wal-ma'asi. And the Muhajir, the emigrant, is the one who migrates away from his sins and his mistakes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِي الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ ذُنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Say, O oh my slaves who have gone beyond bounds with their own souls, do not despair from the mercy of Allah. Indeed, Allah forgives all sins. Indeed, He is the most forgiving, the most 
merciful. أقول ما تسمعون وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولكم لسائر المسلمين من كل ذنب فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم in another amazing story about repentance and about the great mercy that Allah سبحانه وتعالى shows his slaves despite their mistakes. The hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud found in Sahih Muslim. That the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Lillahu ashad farahan bi tawbat abdihi al-mu'min min rajul fi ard dawiya al-muhlika ma'ahu rahlahu alaihi ta'amuhu wa mata'uhu fanama fastayqad wa qad dhahabat." He said, "Sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that indeed Allah is more joyous; He's more overjoyed with the repentance of one of you." Than a man who was traveling in a desolate desert. All he had was his camel, and upon it was his food and all of his belongings. And he stops and he sleeps and he wakes up and he finds none of that with him. So he goes searching for his camel and his things until he's hit by thirst. So he says to himself, There's no, there's nothing left. I'll go back to the place where I was, and wait to die. So when he places his hand on his his head on his hand, and falls asleep there, waiting for death, his camel comes and nudges him to wake up. Then he says, "Thumma qala min shiddat al farah." اللهم أنت عبدي وأنا ربك. He then says, out of his being ecstatic with finding his camel at that moment, O oh Allah, you are my slave and I am your Lord. أخطأ من شدة الفرح. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, he made a mistake out of his ecstaticness, out of his overjoy. فالله أشد فرحا منه بتوبة عبده. So Allah is greater in His joy than this man is with his camel. Allah is greater in His joy with your repentance than this man was with his camel. That statement is a statement which is wrong. But the meaning is that he thought he was on the verge of destruction. And everything that he was waiting for came back to him. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala does not want you to be on the verge of destruction through your sins and your mistakes. He wants you to return to Him. You are more valuable to Him than that camel was to that man in that desperate moment. Make sure that you take these last two days of Ramadan. We have two days and one night. Today. And tonight and tomorrow, to make sincere repentance to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala accept that repentance from each and every one of us. What happens when we reach tomorrow night? When we reach either tonight or tomorrow night, depending upon the sighting of the moon. If we see the moon of Shawwal tonight after Maghrib, then tomorrow is the day of Eid. And if we don't, we'll count 30 days, and then it will be the next day. The next day will be Eid on Sunday. That said, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Wali tukmilu al-idda wali tukabbiru Allah ala ma hadakum, wala alakum tattaqun." So that you may complete the number that Allah has allotted, and that you may glorify, that you may uh, declare His greatness. 
for that which he has guided you and that perhaps you can gain taqwa. So if we see the moon tonight or we see the moon tomorrow, what do we do at that time? At that point in time, Ramadan has ended. And then it is the time of takbir. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Walillahi alhamd. This is one way to make takbir narrated from Salman al-Farisi radiallahu ta'ala anhu and others. There are other ways that are acceptable as well. That takbir should continue until the next morning when the Eid Salah is prayed. It stops when the Imam comes out to lead the prayer. What if we are not being and we cannot go out to be with the community and pray the Eid in their presence? What do we do in that in that instance? What do we do in that instance? In that instance, if we're in quarantine or there are shelter in place rules in in, in place, then you can gather in small groups of your family bringing your family together and praying Eid with them. According to the majority of scholars, this is completely valid for you to do as it was done by some of the companions of the Prophet wasallam, like Anas ibn Malik and others when they were unable to make it to the prayers behind the Imam in their locality. Due to the circumstances at this time, if you miss the Eid prayer normally, you pray it with yourself or with your family, Normally, you would not make a khutbah because you missed the imam's khutbah. But given the circumstances now, it is acceptable for you to make a small khutbah after the Eid prayer as the khutbah in Eid is only a sunnah and it is not something which is an obligation. And it is better for you to gather your family and remind them of Allah than to just sit around and have breakfast or sit around and do anything else. Remember, the Eid is a day as the Prophet ﷺ said, the days of Eid are days of eating and drinking and remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of us, we, we, alhamdulillah, we take advantage of the eating and drinking. But many times we don't take advantage of the dhikr lillah. Make sure that you fill your day with dhikr. How do you pray the Eid Salah? You pray the Eid Salah two rak'ahs, just like you pray Jum'ah. This is the, the, the smallest obligation for you. If you want to add the extra takbirat, either seven in the fir- after takbirat al-ihram and six after coming up from the second rak'ah, or you want to add six total, three in three, both of these ways are acceptable and are from the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. If you are confused and you don't add any takbirat, then your Eid prayer is still acceptable. You pray it out loud just as you would pray Salat al-Jumu'ah. After that we said the khutbah is optional. Remember, we have just a short time until this month ends, but the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is never ending. We only have a few hours left for us to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but Allah is waiting for us to return to Him at every time and in every moment of the day. The door to Ramadan is closing, but the door to Tawbah will remain open until the sun rises from the west. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the hadith of Anas ibn Malik, narrated in Tirmidhi, in the hadith Qudsi, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya ibn Adam, inna kama da'utani wa rajawtani ghafartu laka ala ma kana fika wa la ubali. O son of Adam, as long as you call upon me and hope in me, I will forgive you for whatever you come to me with, and I won't pay it any mind. Ya ibn Adam, law balagat dhunubuka anan as sama, thumma staghfartani ghafartu laka wa la ubali. O son of Adam, if your sins were to reach the sky, to reach the, the, depths, the depths of the atmosphere, and then you were to seek forgiveness from me, I would forgive you, and I wouldn't pay it any mind. يا ابن آدم لو أتيتني بقراب الأرض خطايا ثم لقيتني لا تشرك بي شيئا أتيتك بقرابها مغفرة O oh, son of Adam, if you were to come to me with the entire earth full of sins but you had not associated partners with me then I will come to you with the entire earth full of, full of 
forgiveness. Allahumma ghfir lana dhunubana wa israfana fi amrina wa thabbit aqdamina ya rabbil alameen wa Allah forgive us of our sins and our transgressions and our affairs and make our feet firm, O Lord of the worlds. Allahumma taqabbal minna tawbatana wa ghsil hawbatana wa thabbit aqdamana ya rabbil alameen wa Allah accept our repentance and wash, of, uh, wash us of our sins and make us firm in the times that come forward. Allah mirfa'anna al-waba' wal-bala' wal-fitan wal-mihan ma zahara minha wa ma batana ya Rabbil alameen. O Allah, raise up, from, raise, uh, raise up from, from upon us this pandemic, all trials and tribulations and difficulties, ya Rabbil alameen. Allah mahdina wa ahdi abna'ina wa banatina wa zawjatina wa azwajina wa ummahatina wa abaina wa jiddatina wa ajdadina ya Rabbil alameen. O Allah, guide for us our sons and our daughters Guide our husbands and our wives. Guide our mothers and our fathers and our grandmothers and our grandfathers. Allah Mahdi Zumala'ina wa Jiranina wa Ja'alna Hudat and Muhtadeen. O Allah, guide our co workers and guide our neighbors and make us guides towards your guidance, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ibadullah, inna Allah, Yamuru bil Adali wal Ihsani wa Ita idul Kurba wa Yenha and al Fahshai wal Munkari wal Bagia idukum la alakum tadakarun. أذكر الله العزيز الجليل يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وأقم الصلاة